Ancient Native Americans lived in a primeval world, a world of giant sloths that resembled bears, saber-toothed cats that weighed more than 600 pounds, and dire wolves one-third larger than the average wolves of today. One of these people hunted, fished, and used canoes to go back and forth from the mainland to the islands only a few miles offshore of Southern California. When the man died his bones lay in the earth for 13,000 years, and because they were discovered near Arlington Springs on Santa Rosa Island, he was named the Arlington Springs Man. His bones are one of the oldest dated human remains ever unearthed in the Americas. The human settlement of the Americas has been a topic of intense debate for centuries, and there is still no consensus on the tempo and mode of early human dispersion across the continent. When trying to explain the biological diversity of early groups across North, Central and South America, studies have defended a wide range of dispersion models that tend to oversimplify the diversity observed across the continent. In a new study, scientists aim to contribute to this debate by exploring the cranial morphological affinities of four late Pleistocene, early Holocene specimens recovered from the caves of Quintana Roo, Mexico. Indeed, the story of the first Americans, who they were, and when and how they dispersed across the New World remains one of the most debated chapters in the human story. Archaeologists, geologists and geneticists, among others, have weighed in with different scenarios. But, so far, only one thing is certain, we've got a lot left to learn. For example, a recent study showed that four of North America's oldest human skulls don't even look much alike. An analysis of their variation suggests the story of the first Americans is more complex than once thought. The four specimens are among the earliest human remains known in the continent, and permit the contextualization of biological diversity present during the initial millennia of human presence in the Americas. The specimens were compared to worldwide reference series through geometric morphometric analyses of 3D anatomical landmarks. The results show very different patterns of morphological association for each Quintana Roo specimen, suggesting that the early populations of the region already shared a high degree of morphological diversity. This contrasts with previous studies of South American remains, and opens the possibility that the initial populations of North America already had a high level of morphological diversity, which was reduced as populations dispersed into the southern continent. As such, the study of these rare remains illustrates that we are probably still underestimating the biological diversity of early Americans. Scientists analyzed four of the oldest human skulls found in North America collected from 2008 to 2015 from underwater caves and sinkholes in the Mexican state of Quintana Roo, just a few miles from popular tourist sites such as the Mayan ruins of Tulum. The study of the skulls, which date from about 8,500 to 13,500 years old, adds new complexity to the long-running First Americans debate. Unlike in the previous research on early South Americans, researchers documented unusually broad variation between the North American skulls. To put it simply, if the first Americans represent a single population, you'd expect them to look like it. However, these four individuals do not. In fact, comparing the skulls with modern populations, the research team found that one most closely resembled people living in the North American Arctic while another was most similar to modern Europeans. The other two skulls each had a different mix of features typical of Asian, Native American, South American or Arctic populations. The four skulls, found in sinkholes in the Mexican state of Quintana Roo, were analyzed in the study. To understand what the four skulls variation shows, and what it doesn't, let's first revisit the debate itself. Piles of more recent archaeological research however, have muddied that tidy, linear narrative. Archaeological finds, from southern Chile to Idaho, Florida to British Columbia, have shown that humans were in the Americas thousands of years earlier, well before the ice sheets melted and made overland travel possible. An increasing number of researchers believe that people in northern East Asia may have followed the Pacific coast, eastward to North America and then south, all the way to Chile. Even with glacier meeting the sea across northern stretches of this kelp highway, the explorers would have found ample marine resources to sustain them, no land needed. Unfortunately, most if not all archaeological evidence that might confirm this hypothesis, thanks to rising sea levels over the last 20,000 years, is now submerged. 
What's more, preserved amid the bromeliad-encrusted plateaus that tower over the thorn forests of northeast Brazil, ancient rock art depicts fierce battles among tribesmen, orgiastic scenes of prehistoric revelry and hunters pursuing their game, spears in hand. These were stunning compositions, people and animals together, not just figures alone. Hidden in the rock shelters were prehistoric humans once lived, the paintings number in the thousands. Some are thought to be more than 9,000 years old and perhaps even far more ancient. Painted in red arca, they rank among the most revealing testaments anywhere in the Americas to what life was like millenniums before the European conquest began a mere five centuries ago. But it is what excavators found when they started digging in the shadows of the rock art that is contributing to a pivotal re-evaluation of human history in the hemisphere. Researchers also unearthed stone tools that they say prove that humans reached what is now northeast Brazil as early as 22,000 years ago. Then, paleontologists in Uruguay published findings suggesting that humans hunted giant sloths there about 30,000 years ago. The researchers suggest that if humans were indeed living in South America as far back as 30,000 years ago, they likely arrived there by floating over from Africa, the prevailing winds would have carried them directly there without the need of paddles or sails. Sloths, they suggest, would have been an excellent food source once they arrived. Adults would have been up to 15 feet tall and weighed approximately 2 to 4 tons, offering enough food for a group of people. Human footprints, accompanied by giant sloth prints were recently found in New Mexico and dated to 23,000 years as well. Some of the bones bear telltale markings of human tools, which suggests the animals were hunted for food. The team also found a potentially human-made scraper that could have been used on dry animal hides, and stone flakes. Meanwhile in Texas there is evidence of mammoths being butchered 37,000 years ago, possibly the oldest evidence of humans in North America. What we see in ancient South America is a relatively homogeneous population that does not resemble modern native South Americans. Archaeologists have frequently assumed that the ancient evidence represented a good picture of all early Americans both north and south. In other words, researchers believed, based on available evidence that was largely from South America, that the earliest Americans generally looked like each other. Only over time, for undetermined reasons, did their facial features evolve into those of modern Native American populations. The study shows that this was not the case. South and North America have very different histories and these are also reflected in the biological diversity of early Americans. Geneticists, meanwhile, working with both modern and ancient DNA, have confirmed that the first Americans descended from East Siberian populations, consistent with the Beringia hypothesis, though they have also uncovered evidence of multiple waves of migration over millennia, at least some potentially by following the Pacific coast. Adding to the tangle of theories and ideas about the first Americans, the oldest New World residents didn't look like modern Native Americans. To be clear, we're talking about morphology, the study of form, such as an individual's facial features as determined by skull structure, rather than genetics. Washington State's Kennewick Man, for example, has been said to resemble populations as disparate as modern Europeans and ancient, indigenous Japanese even though the nearly 9,000-year-old skeleton's DNA firmly links him to modern Native Americans. Understanding what first Americans looked like, and why they look different than modern Native Americans, is confounded by a north-south divide. South America is rich in the remains of ancient peoples, but mysteriously North America, is not. Arlington Springs Man is one of the exceptions. The results do not question the origins of Native Americans, as all the available genetic studies so far demonstrate that Native Americans derive from Asian populations. But they do show that early North American populations were much more diverse looking than current Native American groups, which brings up the question of what happened to this diversity over time. In other words, our results don't really speak to the origins of Americans, but to what happened to these groups once they got here. Exactly why early Americans lost this diversity remains unknown though it happened as populations spread across a mass of land that stretches from the Arctic to the subantarctic. Groups would have become isolated for periods, intermixed with other groups, evolved distinct cultures and adapted to a wide range of environments and climates, all of which may have shaped individuals' appearances. 
Therefore, one thing the skulls make clear is how many puzzle pieces in the story of the first Americans have yet to be found. We are always trying to describe the settlement of the Americas as something simple, linear, and straightforward. Everyone has maps with a few long arrows showing the settlement of the continent. What we are trying to do is to provoke ourselves to accept the possibility that we are still far from truly understanding the very complex and convoluted process of the settlement of the Americas.